Good morning, my name is Tom Conkle. I'm a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions, and today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the recently released NIST SP800-171 Rev3, Protecting Controlled Unclassified Information in Non-Federal Systems and Organizations. This publication was released earlier this year in May of 2024 and provides organizations with recommended security requirements for protecting the confidentiality of controlled unclassified information, or CUI, when the information is resident in non-federal systems and organizations. So, to provide a quick overview for anyone unfamiliar with SP800-171, I wanted to highlight that is that it establishes the minimum standard for protecting the confidentiality of CUI in storage during transmission and while being processed. While CUI is unclassified information, it is still information that must be protected from unauthorized access and dissemination, including public access, as, it re as its release would be detrimental to national security. If you're required to meet the SP800-171 requirements, you'll likely also need to be aware of Special Publication 800-171A, Assessing Security Requirements for Controlled Unclassified Information. 171A provides guidance for evaluating whether or not you've met the intent of the requirements in 171. As you implement the security requirements in 171, you can leverage the assessment objectives in 171A to ensure that you have implemented all facets of the requirement. Also, you may be noticing that people are still talking about the previous version, Revision 2. This is because many regulatory requirements are still pointing towards Rev2, even though Rev3 has been released. There have been a lot of changes in technologies, architectures, and threats since the release of 171 Rev2, and Rev3 helps us to address these changes. So what is so special about Revision 3? First, Rev3 was developed using the NIST 853 Revision 5 Security and Privacy Controls. Rev3 is, of 171 is taking an initial step to more closely align with the SP853 moderate baseline and streamline these security controls and requirements. One example of how we can see this is through the introduction of Organizational Defined Parameters, or ODPs, in 171REV3, which adds flexibility for how the security requirements can be achieved. Additionally, while 33 requirements were technically withdrawn, most of these were simply realigned. Withdrawn simply means that the requirement IDs are being removed because the concept from the requirement were moved to other security requirements. Also, there were 19 newly added security requirements based on the expansion that was recently made to 853 Rev5 and the changes to tailoring guidance when down selecting from 853 security controls to the 171 Rev3. Specifically, the NFO or security requirements assumed to already be in place within non-federal organizations were tailored back into 171 Rev3 after significant evidence that this ass assumption by NIST was incorrect. Rev3 maintains the same hierarchy for grouping similar security requirements as the previous Rev2. However, there are now 17 families, 97 security requirements, and 422 assessment objectives. This represents an overall decrease in the number of requirements, but a significant expansion in the number of assessment objectives, highlighting that just because the requirements have decreased doesn't mean that there's less work to be done. Now, let's take a look at the 17 families within 171 Rev3. As we can see, the majority of the families or groups of security requirements did not change, but there are three new families. They are planning, which introduced four requirements, system and services acquisition with two requirements, and supply chain risk management with four requirements. These families were added to align with SP853 Rev5, and now we can see that NIST also believes they are important enough to be included in 171 Rev3. We can also see that the name for the security assessment family was updated to security assessment and monitoring. The newly added planning family includes requirements for developing organizational policies and procedures to standardize cybersecurity capabilities across the organization. It also incorporates a requirement to develop a system security plan or SSP from the security assess assessment family in Rev2 to define how requirements are being implemented by the organization. The systems and services acquisition family requires organizations to, to define security engineering principles and ensure that external systems or service providers provide a protect appropriate protections for CUI. 
and the supply chain risk management family recognizes that modern organizations have deep supply chains to help them operate their business. Therefore, this family ensures that the organization is properly managing cyber risks of their supply chain. I also wanted to highlight that NIST has expanded the guidance provided for each requirement. In an effort to align more closely with the NIST SP-853 control set, they have structured the requirement text similar to those controls and even included direct references. As you can see by the ex this example, the security requirements included include the organizational defined parameters or ODPs in brackets to show where NIST is allowing organizations to define specific criteria for how they want to implement the requirements. It's important to note that federal agencies and data owners are first responsible for assigning the values to the ODPs. However, where no guidance is provided, the organization implementing the security requirement gets to define the ODP for themselves. If you're struggling to determine what you need to do to meet a requirement, please feel free to reach out. My team has been working to implement these requirements in companies and has experience breaking down the concepts and building them out in a way that will support your business. I wanted to wrap up by highlighting a few resources. First, I've included links to the NIST resources we discussed today, including SP-800-171 Revision 3 and 171A Revision 3. I've also included the free Optic SP-800-171 Revision 3 Profile Template. This template is a great way to get started with 171 Rev 3 by capturing your current capabilities as they align to the Rev 3 security requirements to see where you may have gaps in your current program. As always, if you have any questions on RAV3 or implementing any of the security requirements, feel free to reach out. Our team has helped many organizations identify cost-effective approaches for implementing the security requirements to properly protect CUI. I hope you found this overview helpful, and thanks for watching. Optic Cyber Solutions strives to help organizations identify and address their blind spots through our assessment, implementation, and advising services. For more information about Optic Cyber Solutions and how we can help you gain confidence in your cybersecurity, reach out at info at or check out our website at opticcyber.com.